What is particularly unpleasant about this complaint is the way in which it is dressed up as a moral outrage when the facts show that I have no case to answer. At the time, Sir Thomas Legg conducted a lengthy forensic analysis of the additional costs allowance, explaining how it worked, the role of the fees office in interpreting the rules, and pointing out the flaws in the system. A moral assessment was at the heart of the Legg report. A significant part of my opponent's complaint was that I had in some way breached a moral code that they had invented. But the fact was Sir Thomas Legg got there first, making a much more thorough investigation of the parliamentary rules and procedures relating to MPs' behaviour. He produced a well-argued case for what a reasonable person would accept to be within the bounds of propriety. He defined the moral landscape against which all MPs' expenses were judged. Many MPs had their expenses questioned and repayments were requested. The expenses I claimed were fully cleared, not once, but twice. At the time, I made a full unredacted figures available for any constituent or the press to see. That was, that was the time to raise queries, not five years later. Also in passing, I should say that I have seen evidence that a particular member of the association told another member last July that he was going to drop a bombshell about Andrew Turner's expenses, that was, that's the quotation, hardly the action of a loyal conservative this subject is one which can cause endless confusion and uncertainty, particularly five years after the final figures were presented. I am not trying to hide anything. As Catherine Hudson made clear, it would be unfair to try to revisit all the complex matters so thoroughly investigated so long ago. The fact is I have done nothing which the system did not accept or which was found to be morally wrong. Thank you very much.